Hello, everyone. My name is Hoppy Shaw, and I'm presenting today on using Dept Notify to automate workflows. Uh, this is the first presentation I've ever given in uh, 40 plus years on the earth to this many people. I've spoken to a lot of smaller groups, but this is the first time in a conference setting. So any mistakes I make right up front, you guys will give me just a little, little break, right? <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, so let's, uh, let's get some really important things out of the way first. Yes, that is my name, Hoppy. Uh, Harry Hopkins Shaw Jr. is my name. Hoppy comes from Hopkins. I don't think my parents were hippies, but I don't know. They either were hippies or like beer, I, I don't know. But Hoppy just kind of stuck with me all this time, uh, so I tend to go with that. I live in Seattle, Washington. I work for Alaska Airlines. Some of you may have heard of them. We're fifth largest airline in the U.S. Uh, we service 116 airports, and we have 333 aircraft. Um, this is the 12th year in a row we've won our J.D. Power Award for customer service. So if you haven't used Alaska Airlines, I recommend that you do. We fly out of Philly and Pittsburgh, and if my CEO is watching, Brad Tilden, I just hooked us up, so help me out <laughs> when you look this back on the recording. <laughs> Um, so I've been working in IT for a little over 20 years professionally. Before that, I was in the U.S. Army, working on U.S. Army Apache helicopters, uh, doing all the uh, computer maintenance and uh, electronics on those. So shout out to all the fellow veterans out there, men and women. The agenda today is going to be uh, pretty easy to follow. Uh, Depth Notify, I've always felt, is a program that um, is not written by me. It's written by Joel Rennick, um, and it's uh, written in Swift. And when I looked last year for a program to help me out on the, the DEP enrollment process, I came across several, several programs and DEP Notify was one of them. So I thought I'd try to kind of work it through and, and see how I can make it work in my organization. And so I thought this is a great time for a talk because I can share with you what I've done at Alaska Airlines. And then hopefully at the end of the session you can walk away with Maybe I could do something similar at my organization. It doesn't have to be a full-blown implementation. I use it to uh, help out after enrollment. You guys may want to you know, start it up in other ways. You don't have to be DEP enrolled. You can launch it through other mechanisms. So we'll talk about all those things. But the agenda is really simple. Why you would maybe want to use DEP Notify, um, what it can do. Um, we'll talk about the different options you might have. And we're going to do some self-reflecting and thinking about uh, those options. Um, we'll talk about how you deploy it, and then we'll have a closing uh, Q&A session. So the, the first thing I want to start with is a demo. Now, I don't know if that's committing presentation suicide or not, but I don't want to talk a bunch of stuff about what this product is and then show you the product because then you're going to be like, uh, I don't know what I'm, you know, what does this mean when you're showing me? So we're going to look at it first. This is about a five-minute video. The video is a DEP enrolled MacBook that is connected to our MDM at Alaska, which is Workspace ONE, formerly known as AirWatch. I'll say that a lot because I have an icon that I want to share with everyone that uh, I created myself last night at 3 a.m. that's really awesome, and I'm really proud of it, but it may not make sense to some of you younger folks in here. So anyway, I'm going to start the video, and as it goes through, this is the, the regular setup process. Everyone's seen that before. Hopefully that's playing on the screen. Yes, it is. So um, this is AD Credentials logging in to Workspace ONE. Um, it's going to create the computer account uh, for us and get through and, and work through the setup assistant. We have one question we asked during our setup assistant, which is enable location services, um, union rules and such, as you know, with the uh, airline, airlines. Uh, we get to the desktop. I'm going to stop it there for a second, because what Dep Notify does is it launches right after setup assistant. So before my end users have a chance to, oh, I have a new Mac, I want to do so many things and download so many things, no, I'm not going to let you do that. So I've paused it now because it's sped up and it, goes, it, it takes about 30 seconds really to get, to get through it till it, till it launches. Uh, so what I wanted to do is, is stop that and prevent that from happening. So when Depth Notify launches, what happens is, is it takes up the entire screen, it's full screen. So they don't have a, an ability to do anything. Now, the, the way that this looks on the VM, the gray background, this wouldn't be gray on a regular Mac. It would be translucent. And I have a, a slide that I'll show you later. It's the full screen kind of thing you guys have probably all seen before. Uh, and so what I do when this pops up is, um, is I make it full screen. 
and then I uh, decide that I want to give them a little background of, of what uh, welcoming them to Alaska Airlines, uh, telling them thank you for choosing a Mac and being a little different because we are all a little different in our own ways, right? And so um, I'm telling them at the bottom, hey, you need to have your five-digit mail code and you need to have your username. If you don't have those items, stop. But I ask for those things. I'm gonna slow it down here just really quickly to talk about a couple things. This box that you're seeing here is totally customizable. You can have up to two text boxes and you can have four drop downs. And I have a screenshot of that that I'll show you later on. For the purposes of this demonstration, all I needed to do was I needed to capture their mail code, which is where they're located at, their physical location, um, because we define that even by floor. So that five digit code, I capture that. And then I also wanna know their username. Um, and I take those two items and that's what I use to create the machine name later on and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, the other option here at the bottom, who is performing this install, it's self-install or uh, field services. That's because our field services tech, field service techs that are out there, they don't want what you're getting ready to see. They just want, they just want the stuff, they give me the goods, give me the applications, give me the profiles. I don't care about the history lesson of Alaska Airlines which you guys are all gonna sit through, but it's only gonna take five minutes, <laughs> so don't worry. So you notice right away I've changed the icon up top to the fancy application icon. I've said, hey, we're installing some applications. I've put some text up there to say, uh, we're gonna, if you have some problems, contact the help desk, uh, because I'm not at the help desk, so they can contact them all they want. Um, <laughs> At the very bottom, I talk about how I found some apps. So we, as you're looking through this, um, there's really four different sections. There's the icon, there's the main title, which says at this point, the early days. There's the history, which started in 1932, believe it or not, in Alaska. Uh, we're headquartered in Seattle, Washington, by the way. Pacific Northwest peeps, anyway, I think they're all in overflow because they were late. Well, a few of you, okay. Um, there's my support right there. Uh, and then at the very bottom, it's, it's, it's reflecting a couple, it could reflect one of two things. It could reflect or tail the log file for the MDM that I'm connected to, and or I can put in my own stuff in there. So what I've decided to do is I put my own stuff here at the very bottom. So where you say we found some apps, where you see that on the screen, uh, that is me, my, me putting that information in there and then you'll see as we go through this and go through this history lesson, it's every decade of Alaska Airlines. I hope you're reading quick, I think it's 15 seconds for each for each one. A lot of people don't know Alaska Airlines was the first one to have like onboard uh, movies. Uh, a lot of our pilots were first with iOS. Our team manages all the iOS and mobile devices, Mac OS, Windows machines. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, our very iconic uh, tail uh, section there, that's the old miner. Uh, but then we went later on and decided on the Eskimo, which you guys all see on the tail, uh, tail sections now. Uh, used to be those four during the 70s. So as you, can, as you look through there, as each screen changes, notice the, the bar at the bottom, how it's moving each one. I'm controlling that as well. So each time something changes at the bottom where I'm installing an app or I wanna move the bar, I move the bar. So think about it, you're the end user sitting there watching this. You have no idea that in the background I'm, I'm installing antivirus, I'm installing Office, I'm installing Forescout, I'm doing all the things that normally a user might interrupt if they get a Mac right away and they start doing things. So I've taken it all out of their hands and put it in this one complete package. <laughs> a phone number at the bottom for help desk. So as you're looking at these, do you, are you getting some ideas of how you could maybe leverage this in your own organization? If for nothing else, to give it to your field service techs to say, hey, launch this package, because we're gonna package all this at the end. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna launch this package and just do a bunch of stuff. Connect to my MDM, pull down some apps, uh, install my client from my MDM, because I don't do that from Workspace ONE. I do it through the Depth Notify script. Uh, this is a 2000s and beyond. By the way, I did a lot of hard work to come up with all this data. I went to Wikipedia, I went to our marketing team. I think most of it's pretty correct. I mean, no one's really tested me on it, so I think I'm pretty much the authority. This video is gonna come out though, I'm probably gonna get some emails. So uh, marketing department, I love you folks. You guys are great. <laughs> um, welcome to the Alaska team. So see, we give a nice little welcome. We, put, we say, hey, welcome to the team. Um, we're installing Office, which means we're almost done because for me, that's my trigger. 
I wait for Office to be installed before I quit Dep Notify. So I start Dep Notify, do a bunch of stuff, and I say, okay, I wanna quit, but before I quit, make sure you have Office installed. So I'm doing kind of a while this is going on. Um, uh, don't, don't make any moves. And then I put a little snarky comment in there about it being over two gigs, and sorry it's taking so long, but I think that blows by pretty quickly. Let's see. Yeah, Office is almost two gigs. It's gonna be a few, depending on your network. And remember, your MDM, DEP, so I can do this on any network. The idea would be that they're using our guest network right now. They're not using our corporate network because they're not allowed on our corporate network until we install certain applications and they meet certain criteria. That's why DEP Notify for me was a game changer because I needed to have those things installed before I, you know, gave them the stuff that they needed or, or let them on the network. Uh, so Workspace One, we have these nice little notifications. Um, at the end of Depth Notify, I said to immediately quit, and because I'm pushing File Vault via profile, what has to happen when you install File Vault? I need the person to log out or at least reboot. So I force that here. So they they have to close out, even if they dismiss, it's going to log out. They'll log off. They'll get a nice little pop up here that'll say, uh, "Okay." enter in your password. Guess what, it's their single sign-on password because they just went through this whole process and already authenticated. So we're enabling File Vault. It then comes back up here briefly. And they are able to log in. Again, it's their single sign-on password even though it's a local account. They're not domain joined at all. These are not domain joined Mac because we use Nomad. If you've heard of Nomad, it's a great product. If you haven't heard about it, I have links all over the place. I've got this, I have a slide dedicated to links. And that reminds me, everyone's going to get the slides, so you'll be able to, to follow along and do what we need to do. Um, I'm not, this presentation isn't about Nomad, but I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out right now about it. So now what's going to happen is it's asking for their single sign-on password because it wants to connect to Active Directory. And once it connects to Active Directory, it's going to get a Kerberos ticket, put it in, in the keychain, and then allow it into Active Directory resources without much fuss. You can also do certificates that way too. So what's nice about that is if I log off or I change my password somewhere else and I come back to my Mac, it's gonna prompt me and say, oh, uh, I've noticed you've changed your password because I can't get a Kerberos ticket anymore. So can you give me your updated password, update your keychain, and everybody's happy. That's the way we kind of got around the, you know, joining uh, to, to the domain because I, I didn't really want to do it very much. Um, after all the headaches with File Vault and mistyping passwords, and it just became a nightmare. So, Deb Notify is completely controlled via echoing text to its control file. When you see control file, just think log file. It's the same thing. So, Deb Notify comes with its own little file, and as long as I push data to that file, it's going to output that into the screen. So, the application then reacts to command and status lines written to that log file which I'm gonna share what all of those are. Uh, and then you can control everything with a script. So you write a one bash script, and it is pretty long, but it does everything you need it to do. And everything's contained within that one script. Um, I messed with this with some other scripting language and doing some other things, but I'm not a, a big time scripting person. In fact, everything that I've put together, I've pulled from several other people that I've uh, and then I've created myself as well that I give shout outs to at the end because it's just the Deb Notify community, especially on the Mac Admin Slack channel, is incredible. So if you have not joined that community and you're interested in learning more, definitely after this uh, presentation, join up with that community because any answers you need, you need, you can pretty much get there. So the order of operations kind of is to get the Deb Notify package onto the machine. So however you need to do that, get the Depth Notify package onto the machine. This is a single package. Then you're going to launch Depth Notify via script. You're going to, as actions complete to the script, it's going to write to the Depth Notify control file or log. Uh, then those entries are going to appear on the screen as we already talked about. It's going to quit Depth Notify, remove those files, and then uh, the most important thing about this is you control what happens. So you saw my demo there. Um, again, it's, the, the, it's wide open, whatever you guys want to wanna, wanna do um, with Depth Notify. So why we use Depth Notify? I'm going to just tell you a brief story. Um, so when I got to Alaska Airlines, they were managing Macs via uh, 
installing software uh, the, the long way. They were not in depth. Uh, we had two different MDMs. Um, we're using uh, System Center Configuration Manager. We also had um, AirWatch at the time, which later became Workspace ONE. Um, and we were just having a really difficult time managing Macs. So uh, I said, well, why don't we get parallels for Mac management because then we can integrate with SCCM and I can do imaging. It'll be perfect. Field Services was so happy. Guys, I got so many donuts and coffee and stuff. That's why I'm 300 pounds, probably. That and beer. But I did all of that stuff. And, and, and for them, and they were so happy, and we were like, okay, what, uh, what, what, how can we make this even better? And with imaging, it, it was down to 25 minutes. You know, you put an image on the Mac, it was great, they were out the door, and it was terrific. Um, and then, of course, we know what happened uh, starting last year where um, that option of, of imaging kind of went away. And I know other speakers last year and this year have all talked about imaging and the changes with, with that. But I'm of the opinion is, is in that we should probably look at our Mac management systems and how we manage things and think about the end user, I'm sure as most of you do, and get to the point where we're okay with letting the end user do or handle the majority of this stuff. If I, can, if I can empower an end user to do everything that you just saw up there, if I give them the basics to do that, why not allow them to do that? Now, this doesn't fit everybody's scenario. Not everyone in this room is gonna be able to do that. You have hard requirements, you have to build in, in, a, in a bench area, you're not able to give the end user that ability. But when I started thinking about this, that's why I came across Step Notify because I was able to give a Mac in a box to a user and then with some brief instructions, they were able to open it up on any network, do what they need to do, and then immediately connect to the corporate network. For me and my workflows, that, that made the most sense. For you and your workflows, that may or may not work, but maybe you can incorporate it in some other way to ease the burden of your field service folks. Um, that's why I gave the field services options, because we all have VIP folks that aren't going to want to sit through a 13-minute you know, history lesson. They just want what they want now. And so that's why a field services rep would be able to do what they needed to do really quickly. Um, I put this in here, I'm not sure. I, I had a funny thing I was gonna say about it. I think it was just in relation to imaging in general or um, managing Macs in the enterprise. Um, I, I, I wasn't really sure, I just thought, you know, I should just put it in here and put it on a loop and just leave it for a bit, just so we can think about how to, so we can take it all in. Um, I, just really quick as this is going, how many people in here are not using any kind of Apple Business Manager or DEP by a show of hands? Okay, a couple. Is there anyone in here that is not using any MDM at all? Okay, one. All right. So most of you then are doing some type of workflow where you have an MDM and you have DEP and you're enrolling devices and giving those to the user. This is the icon that I did at 3 a.m. So this is... Uh, this is the MDM formerly known as AirWatch. Hopefully some of you get it. I mean, I, I figured maybe some of you didn't, so I put this up there, but I didn't want to get hit with the copyright thing. Right, Prince? Is it anyone? Okay, well, I thought it was funny at 3 a.m. I was laughing my butt off, but uh, I thought, oh, I have to put that in the presentation for some reason. Um, building computers in the dark and lonely spaces sucks. That's just a fact. Um, those are all Windows machines because I couldn't find one with a bunch of Macs because uh, I don't know why. But uh, depending on how complicated or not you make the enrollment process, it might be kind of easy. So as you think about Depth Notify, think about your own enrollment processes. And is this something that, not someone that young, obviously, I mean, at least five or six, that's a little too young. Uh, we want you know, to be able to, do, to, to, to enroll that device uh, is it possible for them to do it? I mean, because see how happy people are when it works? These are all your coworkers. They're so excited. They built their Mac themselves. They didn't have to call help desk for the password for the fifth time. They knew it right away. They were able to log right in. Uh, that was an interesting picture, actually. Uh, so what can Depp, do, Depp Notify do for me? Um, well, it, it, can do, it can do a lot of things. One of the basic things that it, it's really good at is some... Uh, stuff that you might not think of, like an end user license agreement. In my presentation, I don't have one, but you can certainly add one in Depth Notify if you'd like. So you can have a uh, EULA start right away, and guess what, they can't pass this. If they click, try to click off of it or cancel it or do whatever, Depth Notify shuts down, and you can set the machine to shut down. You can do all kinds of things. So they can't get past this. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool, as we already showed you, is you have a two-choice 
thing there. I'm going to show you another screen here that talks about, um, uh, the, this is a, actually a Jamf instance from Peter Wells. The text is kind of small. What I wanted you to get here is, is that translucency is what I was talking about. That's what a full screen looks like. Now, savvy users can still get by that, as you know, by opening another desktop, doing all kinds of stuff with uh, finger swipes. But for the most part, it's kind of hard to do. Um, and so what Peter's done here is in Jamf, he just has one or four choices. It's either a staff computer, uh, it's, a, it's you know, a teacher system, it's some other system. And then based on that one choice, that then talks to Jamf and says, okay, well, you're supposed to get all this stuff. He does it all with four profiles. And so the nice part about you Jamf folks that have uh, that as your MDM, there's already a script built. All you have to do is input some variables. I'll share the link with you. And uh, you guys are ready to go. I mean, it's, it's all already almost done for you. Um, this is an interesting one. This is from Federico. Um, he's a heavy uh, contributor on DEP Notify on the Mac Admin Slack channel. And this is kind of demoing the new way of um, all the, the new options that you have now. So these are the two text boxes up top and the, the four uh, drop down boxes. So think about as you're seeing this play out, wow, what could I do with this? Right? Like you have four different options there of variable drop downs that you could use from an array of choices in the script. And based on those four things, I want to deliver this package, or I want to deliver these applications. So this is a great way to kind of oof, get some good information. Um, and, I, and I hit the wrong button, but that's OK, because we can see it again. If he's been really great about especially doing the dark mode. Notice that's the generic icon if you didn't change the icon. Uh, and then here at the bottom, what's really nice is you have this computer store sensitive information. So when you click on that button, you get uh, several other options that weren't available in the early releases. So this would be something that would be nice to tag, wouldn't it? I mean, if you're an end user or, or if you're not an end user and you're tech and you're going through this screen, I, I, this is some great stuff to be able to capture for HIPAA compliance and other things. So then he's going to hit register there, and that's pretty much the, the end of, uh, of that demo. So we're whizzing through this pretty quickly. I don't feel like I'm talking very fast, but this isn't the content of this really, the, the beef of this program is really in the script and how it, the script runs and how you deliver and package that script. So uh, what I want to talk a little bit right now is the script logic and how I have things set up in my environment. And uh, it, this will also correlate to how you maybe want to set it up in your environment. So it starts with variables um, in the script, obviously. You have some, uh, some logic there of how you're going to connect to your MDM. So maybe in my case for Workspace ONE, we make API calls. So I have this uh, uh, string, I have a tenant address, I make API calls up to uh, Workspace ONE, and then I curl down the, the data during the build process from the internet. So it's always the latest and greatest application, so I don't have to keep fun fumbling with that. I can just have the one application that's there is the latest, that's the one I want you to grab. Uh, wait for setup assistant and finder is the other part of logic that we use in the script. We remove the old configuration files and check for a finish file. The finish file is really important because if I don't put the finish file at the end and somehow depth notify relaunches, it would be a bad day because then it would go through the whole process again for the end user. So we don't want that to happen. We keep Mac, the Mac awake and turn off updates. The depth notify op application runs and then we wait for the final app and then quit. So we're going to go through each one of these, and I'm going to show you my code in each one of these so you can see how this is. Again, this will all be on my GitHub probably by the end of the week, uh, updated with the latest and greatest. If you use Workspace ONE, you're more than happy to grab it and just put in your variables and, and play around with it and see if it works for you. So the variables that I've called out here basically are the, the one that's really important is probably the second one down, which is where the depth notify log or control log is. That's where it resides. Um, so whenever I do anything in this script, I'm always pushing that over to the depth notify config log. This other piece is my tenant information. Uh, this is the auth string, tenant code, device serial number, and um, all the different apps that I install, Skype, Office, Nomad, Nomad Launch, Teams, Forescout, and Silence. 
I do a couple of others as well that aren't on this list. Uh, and those are just simple API calls um, that happen, and I'll show you the, the code for that. This is the setup assistant to finish and finder to finish. I know that might be kind of harder for you guys to read, but it's, um, j I'm just really trying to get you guys to, under to see the, the logic and what we're, how the script will runs. Um, removing old config files and checking for the finished file. That top line is also getting the currently logged in user. That's, that's another important part. Depth notify runs as the, after the user or as the user uh, themselves, under the user context, I should say. Um, so that you're getting the current logged in user. I'm looking for depth notify logs, deleting them if they exist. I'm not going to sleep. I'm turning off software updates. By the way, I didn't turn, turn off software updates in the beginning. That wasn't a good thing. I didn't get any, any, any coffee for that or donuts, I, I messed up. Um, but luckily I had only deployed it out to a couple of different people to test, so I caught my mistake. Uh, Deb Notify application runs after sending uh, Deb Notify options. So here's where we get specific with MDMs, okay? If you look at that first argument line, you're gonna see uh, the logged in user, I'm gonna open Deb Notify, and I'm using some arguments there. The first argument you see is full screen. The four arguments that you see underneath are the four MDMs that Depth Notify supports right away with Swift. And what I mean by support is, is in the Swift code, in Depth Notify, it already has built in what or where those log files are located on your system. So Jamf, it already knows where those log files are and it knows how to handle Depth Notify. Depth Notify knows how to handle itself and where to tail the log files to show that information at the very bottom. The other thing that, uh, that these four things do is, um, I know with Jamf, I think there's some specific differences. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, it's basically going to tail that log file and tell you when something's installing, downloading, uh, when it's um, running, uh, there's several different options there that you have that, uh, that will show up on that bottom line where it said installing Skype for Business before and, you know, I've downloaded some apps. That is the location that when you tail the log files, that's what shows up. The other two options besides full, you have full screen and you have path. If you want to change that var uh, depth notify log file path, you can change it there if you'd like. Uh, this is the bulk of the code that uh, gets us to this part. So the first thing here in this particular piece of code is I'm echoing an image command uh, to get the icon, and then I'm changing the main title here, Welcome to Alaska Airlines. So if you were to look at my script in the middle, it's just a bunch of these commands, really. Um, and they just differentiate between image, main title, main text, icon, I mean, it's, it's very simple and logical when you look at it all uh, together. So then to get the, the part in the middle, I do, um, you know, thanks for choosing a Mac and be a little different, that's just a regular command. And then the status command, the second command down, that's what says what's happening at the bottom. Notice that it's empty, because I didn't want to give a status right here, I just decided, you know, I don't need any information there at the bottom. And then the last one there is what does the register button. So I don't want you to go any further. I don't want the script to stop until you hit register. Uh, this particular piece of code is all of this. Now, I want to point out, Depth Notify, if you go to the website today, they talk about a plist. All of these commands that you see here can actually be written in a plist file now. I had already put together all of this in my current environment, and instead of just going to a plist, I just wrote out the commands, defaults right, menu, nomad, blah, 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 instead of actually putting it in a plist file, which I could have done for all of these different uh, se um, selections, because all these different keys at the end, like text field bubble, text field to bubble, pop-up menu bubble, those are all specific fields to depth notify that you're able to manipulate, and I have a link to all of those uh, so you can see what options you have. Uh, that's pretty much the, the same thing. I mean, the mail code, the, the eyes for help, if you needed a user to click on that to get more information, um, all of that is done here through that body text code of the script. Uh, this is another shot of Federico's um, screen, and at the bottom is the actual link to all of the commands. 
So um, this is an example of everything that's available today in Depth Notify, where those commands are located and how you would call those out are at the link at the bottom here. Uh, so when you get the slides, you can check it out and you can find it on the website as well. This is along the same lines. This is a command main title. So I changed the main title to the 1970s. Command main text, um, command image. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward as you go through these. So if you think of my script in a sense of top to bottom, I would run these commands and then I'd do a sleep command for 45 seconds. Then I'd run another series of commands and sleep command for 45 seconds. Each time I do that sleep command, I would say move the bar over one move the bar over one, move the bar over one. So going back to uh, you folks here are in control of how you want it to look. So you, know, you want it to go faster, slower. Do you want to wait for them to do something or something to be installed before you go further? Uh, you're in control of all of that. It's, it's totally um, um, controllable. This, this piece, Installing Skype for Business, so in Workspace ONE, we have pre-install scripts. Since the monkey integration, we're able to add pre- and post-install scripts uh, as our applications are deployed out. So what I did on the application side is I just added that little snippet of code that just popped up there at the bottom to the pre-install script. So every time it installs, it looks for that log, and if it sees it, it says, oh, I'm supposed to tell people that this is installing because this is a depth notify run. And then finally, before it Depth Notify quits, these are your four different options for quitting. You can do a command quit, which quits right away, no questions asked. You can do a command quit, thanks for using the app. Bye, thanks, and you can click OK or quit. Uh, command restart, your session will restart. They have to click OK to restart. Or command restart now, you don't care. You're just gonna restart them now and they have no choice. Some of you admins in here, I like, you're smiling because you like that. You like to be able to just restart it on them. That's fine. I know, I see you out there. Uh, I wanted to bring up this piece of code because this is the, the thing that I was struggling with. You know, we have usernames, we have long usernames. We also have people that are, that are uh, vendors, so they have V dash in their name. So in this free form text box, there's some characters I don't want. So I'm limiting their characters with this little bit of code. There's also a special form now in the new version where you can not have to do it in code. There's actually a reg regex call that you can make to limit the characters, limit the, the amount of characters. You can do all of that. So I'm taking the mail uh, code and the username. I'm bringing them together and I'm putting an M in the middle and that is the Mac username that gets written to the Mac and then pushed up to Workspace ONE. Now before you tell me I'm a horrible uh, administrator for putting the user's name in the actual name of the Mac, I fought for it. I, I fought, uh, fought hard for not having it there, but in, it, it's there anyway, because I'm a big proponent of not putting the username on the Mac. I don't know for security reasons, but whatever. Some of you don't seem to be equal with not having it. That's cool. <laughs> I might be wrong. I don't know. Uh, so this is the option, if tech build equals self-install, then do this little piece. So you saw the drop down, you can have a self-install or you can have field services. So this particular piece is that it's basically just a, if it's this, run this bit of code. If it's this, run this bit of code. So for this particular part, I want to do a network connection check because tech builds, oftentimes they might be in spotty wireless areas, um, you know, if they're helping a customer. So I'm just checking for internet first before I do anything. And then after the, the internet is checked and everything works, it just does the install. This is the curl command I'm using with all the variables that I listed up at the front. The field services option, this is what I was talking about before. This is what their screen looks like. So they get an internet connection is good. Um, and then uh, they go through here and say, um, this is the same screen you saw before. And then I just say, okay, curl, curl it down, wait five seconds. Curl it down, wait five seconds. It doesn't, you know, it, however fast they can get all the apps on there, go ahead and do that uh, for the tech. And uh, they don't really get any kind of input other than what's happening at the bottom. Standby for apps, that will change to Skype, Nomad, and the other things. So deployment, how to build the depth notify package. 
So in order to install Depth Notify, there's really four key things that you're going to need because you're going to want to, you're going to have to create a package. And the reason I say that is because, especially if you want to include icons, if you want to um, include any kind of uh, post install script or anything like that, you're going to want to create a package. And so you need four things. You need uh, two scripts, post install and the Depth install script. You need the application itself, Depth Notify application. In my case, I need icons and then, of course, some folders for a proper folder structure. Uh, in a nutshell, this is what those things look like after you're done. So you have um, a launch dep.plist, which when the package is installed, what happens is, is that particular piece goes into the launch daemons folder. And when it gets there, it's immediately clicking off a command to say, hey, I want you to launch uh, depth notify. Uh, script. I want you to launch the Depth Notify script. So that's the piece during post install that happens that launches Depth Notify. So then what happens there is the Depth install script will start and it'll start doing all the things it needs to do. I actually download my MDM uh, agent during that time. I don't do it during the setup assistant because I want to control when that agent installs because we all know sometimes that agent will install, start firing off a bunch of profiles, and then it might mess up my workflow. So I want to control when that agent gets installed. Then you have the Depth Notify app, you have the icons uh, folder there, and then post install. Those permissions need to be set before you package it. If anyone was in Greg's class yesterday, he reiterated, change permissions on whatever files you need before you package anything for deployment. Don't do it in a post install script. Because if you do, there's chances that it might not work well. So take Greg's advice. It's kind of a big deal, I think. So he would appreciate it if I said that. Uh, these are the two commands, package build and product build. So you, you build the package first to get a build.pkg file. And then I take that and I sign it with my Alaska Airlines developer cert because I'm distributing it as a bootstrap package through my MDM. And I did not, I just realized what I did there. I got to change that. Is that a big deal to have that Alaska Airlines in the code there? You think the, five, the H? Five six two seven five. Okay, that's what I thought. You should just open up a package and find. So this is what the the actual script um, or the the folder structure looks like before I run those two commands. So I'm sitting in the folder above build, and I run those two commands, and voila, out pops step notify package dot one dot one dot four, and I'm able to deploy that one package to my MDM, and then after Setup Assistant, it comes, or during Setup Assistant, it's bootstrapped to the Mac, and then it launches. So you could take this package, you can deliver it via Monkey, you can deliver it via sneaker net and a USB stick using Bootstrapper. You can, I mean, there's all kinds of different options to take this package and deploy it somewhere. Worst case scenario, if you have MDM but you don't have DEP, then just take the, um, uh, or download the enrollment client enroll the, the device, the Mac, and then once it's enrolled, it'll check DEP and say, oh, you've got a bootstrap package, I'm gonna install it now, even though Setup Assistant hasn't run, it's due to run on all new Macs. So that's another way around that. Uh, so all that's left to deploy the package, these are the different options. You have your MDM of choice during DEP or after manual enrollment. Install applications by Eric Gomez has been around for a little bit, uh, that works really well. Um, Bootstrapper is a, is a Greg Neagle um, special that works really well because it uh, allows you to, from HTTP on a local network, be able to connect your Mac up, put down, um, or get this package, in, in, install it, and you can run Depth Notify that way. And then Nomad Login. So the other part that I showed you was Nomad. Nomad Login is a completely different animal, and it's, it's, uh, it's awesome as well. And they're doing a lot of stuff with Nomad Login and Dep Notify. So um, there's more information on that online. So definitely check that out. Uh, so Dep and Catalina, we all have read the reports of what's going to happen with the new version of, of Mac OS. Uh, this may or may not change the Dep Notify uh, flow of things. I'm excited to see about the user account setup and the bootstrap tokens and see how that might impact Dep Notify. Um, but there's more to come on that. Of course, we'll continue to test around that. Uh, here are all the links that I talked about. Uh, sh you know, there's a lot of people in the Depth Notify community that I think have done a lot of work around this product. 
um, around making it something unique. Um, and it's certainly something that wasn't, I don't think, in the community um, as just, you know, like a year and a half ago. I think a lot of people, there's Splash Buddy and there's other products, and I don't want to discourage any of you from looking at any of those other products. But with Depth Notify, I felt like it was something that was easy that I could manipulate myself, make it my own for my own organization, because if I was to ask 25 people in here how they build machines, I might get 25 different answers. So there's not one solution that fits all, but I do feel like that this one particular solution, if crafted according to how you would like to, to build, um, you can craft it the way you, know, you need it to, to be crafted. Boy, that, that was a convoluted sentence. But I came around, I think, at the end to... to <laughs> so, um, you know, there's some names in here. These are just, uh, these links obviously are, are embedded. So um, I do have a GitHub page that I'm gonna be updating by Friday that if you're on Workspace ONE, you'll be able to, to check out and, um, and take away from. The main page for Depth Notify Starter, if you Google Jam Depth, Depth Notify Starter or click on the link, that has everything you need to know about getting started in Jamf with Depth Notify. Um, I think you'll find it really easy, especially if you're a, a Jamf shop. It should work really well. Neil Martin is, uh, is a great resource. I uh, mentioned Eric Gomez, John Malman, he was here in the conference. I don't know if he's here in this present, no. But uh, John's great, and I got a lot from John as well um, when researching Depth Notify last year when I started down this path. Uh, there's the different shout outs, uh, a lot of Pacific Northwest folks, um, but certainly people that have, have been a, a huge help. Um, before I get into Q&A, I did want to see if I can go over here and show a video, if it lets me, let's see, yes, maybe. So this is, um, Oh, it's over here. So this is um, a colleague of mine in London who did, oh, you're not seeing it because I have to move it, hold on. At least we're in Q&A. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna send you the link and not show you because uh, I'm not so good with technology, so. <laughs> so it's fine. Anyway, what are your questions? What can I help you uh, answer, if there are any? I'm gonna, okay, so I can throw a little bit, but I don't know how far. There's a shared room, so somebody's gonna have to get that. Let me, I'm gonna pass it to you and then pass it back, maybe, someone? Here we go. Wow, that's, that's a good throw for me, actually. <laughs> Um, so I had a quick question. So in like, so I like the workflow where basically you selected the computer type. So there was like staff mm -hmm. or what have you. Uh, based on the group, there was a different software deployment. So I work in the educational, you know, realm. And mm -hmm. for a computer that doesn't have necessarily a user, like a specific user, is mm -hmm. there a way to deploy Depth Notify <clears throat> before the first user logs in? Um, yes, so the way that we would work that is if you had a, um, if you had a uh, situation where you wanted to sit down in front of the system and deploy uh, something that would, gonna, that would go to multiple users, we'd probably use a service account first, create a basic account, you know, a local account that... Sure that we know is gonna work for all of the things that they need. Like we have iOS devices that fall under the same category, it's multiple people, so we use a staging account. And we have a staging account for Depth Notify actually. So at, if you're on that staging account, you get a few different more options after you log in. And then um, the techs can sometimes, will go back and create a local account uh, on that Mac for that user. Um, since we don't have mobile accounts, that's really the only way we can do it. But with Nomad, then it can then sync that password, as soon as they log in, we can give them a generic one like right. one, two, three, four, and this is your account, they log in, Nomad log pops up, says, hey, um, I can't get a Kerberos ticket, what's your AD password? They put that in, gets their local password to get the keychain, and then it syncs up. 
Okay, so you, you, do you manually create that first user then? Or, because right now I have it set up where the MDM creates a local user on the computer mm -hmm. in the background, um, and then it comes up to the Nomad login screen and the end user logs in, but it doesn't really work for the lab environment. So I guess, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I guess you would manually log in as the, the, you know, the local user then? Is what you're saying? Yeah, but I think there's there's might be maybe something around Nomad login that would work. Are you using that, or have you looked at Nomad login? Yeah, yep, we are using Nomad login. Okay, yeah, I think maybe that way. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Okay, that's all right. Um, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> last bit here. Sure. Um, you're way back there, so keep the squawk box. I okay, perfect. Maybe a long throw. So, uh, the so there is like. Like for depth notify running before the first user logs in, like there's nothing, like there's no way to make that happen, right? As far as, like it doesn't, it won't run until the first user logs in. Like it's set up that way, right? Yeah, it's set up. It's set up in in a way. I think the the video that I was going to show, there's a Jamf um, piece that it seems like it kicked off. It kicks off at the desktop. I don't know of. I have right. not seen it kick off any other way except for sitting at a desktop. And okay. then it, it kicks off and installs what it needs to install. Perfect. Okay, yeah, that's all I need to know. Just wondering okay. if there's some magic. That... Maybe somebody else has some. I would certainly pose that question to the Depth Notify channel on Slack. It may have already been asked. Okay. But I don't, I don't have a specific answer for that. Uh, good question. Uh, right yes. now we use uh, Jamf and Enrollment Complete uh, Trigger. Mm -hmm. Is uh, DEP uh, Notify is like replacement for Enrollment Complete Trigger, or is it like an extra? No, so what I, I know the example that uh, one of my colleagues uses that uses Jamf for the, to end out the, the enrollment process is they wait for a piece of security software to run. And as soon as that security piece of software has run, um, then that's when they trigger the enrollment complete and stop the process from running. And the packages, I saw you just uh, put the links to every package that you want to install. But if we use like, a, S3 bucket, then we just need to get the links uh, somewhere, or can I just put like a plug? Yeah, you could actually put the packages, I think, as part of the, I mean, Depth Notify doesn't have to be the only thing that's kicking off there. If you want to put the packages someplace as part of this whole package, I think in Eric Gomez's example for install applications, doesn't he put multiple packages, including Depth Notify, in one of those packages, I believe, so you could just put them all together and, and do it that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm, sure. What are the questions? Thank you. I think we're in kind of a similar situation with how um, uh, my, I, I work for health insurance company and we have Cisco ICE authentication on mm -hmm. the network, which is just so much fun. Um, wow. So anyway, yeah. as a That's result, a good time. I, can't, I mean, Nomad's now Jamf Connect. Yes. And I can't use any of the login provi providers or anything because I can't get to the network because I can't authenticate to it. Mm -hmm. But I saw that with Depth Notify, I saw with that bootstrap process that you that you illustrated that if my company by some miracle would provide a guest network unproxied on yes. on Cisco iced, not probable but possible. Right. Uh, if that happens then I then we could use that bootstrap process to then bring down those components for then that individual user to create because it's all profile based. It's all user based in terms of mm -hmm. the certificates authenticating to ICE, it's all domain credentials and everything like that. Yeah. So we also use smart cards, so forget about taking it out of the box and putting it there, <laughs> that, that dream is dead. It's not, not gonna but happen. But the bootstrap okay. process, that seems, if you can explain more about that, because that really seems like the way to go, because you have a similar, pro it's, it's, it seems like you have a similar process in terms of the user profile when it's established has to authenticate to your corporate network. Am I saying that right? Is that how it I, is with I, you? I think so, yeah, let me, I'll re-explain it, but it's, it's um, so basically what happens is, is that because our MDM is tied to our Active Directory, when they get through the Setup Assistant and they log in with their single sign-on credentials, already at that point, when they're checking in and going through Setup Assistant, they then are talking to the MDM and figuring out what packages or whatever they need to install. It's very possible to do a bootstrap package to deliver exactly what you need in order to get on that corporate network um, before it takes the next step. Now, before you even get through Setup Assistant, you're gonna have to have some kind of network connection. Yeah. So once you get past that and you get what's needed on the corporate side, then you can connect. That's exactly what I do. So I go through, 
I um, do the, I have a bootstrap package, which is depth notify, and then that initial account is created, gets to the desktop, and it's still connected to our guest wireless network or in some other fashion, some other network. Once it goes through depth notify, there's then a trigger to connect to our hidden SSID, which is then the corporate network, and then Nomad launches, and then they're all, they're good to go. The, the end user isn't the wiser. Thank they, you. Yep, sure thing. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. You're going to have to throw it to see how health insurance has the right arm. Let's go. All right. Nice. All right. You mentioned uh, a few different MDMs. Yes. Are, is there any development on the micro MDM side of that? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, I, was, I, I think I failed to make the point that those four that I mentioned that work with Depth Notify, they work because they automatically tail the logs of those four MDMs. You can absolutely do one of two things. You can open up the Swift code after downloading it in Xcode and add micro MDM if you want to add the log files and add the things you need and add the dash micro MDM trigger to that. Or you could simply just add that um, location in your code when you're, when you're tailing the logs at the bottom. You could just say, hey, look in this specific place for, you know, for that uh, information. Um, I'm, I don't know, does MicroMDM have the ability for you to upload a, a package and then bootstrap a Mac after Setup Assistant? Well, there's, there's another open source solution called Install Application. Um, well, the Eric Gomez application, yeah. 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 So the answer was because um, I don't, you didn't have the box, and the other room might not have heard, but you were recommending install applications for that that very part if micro MDM doesn't allow the bootstrapping of the Mac. So, what other questions? We've got 24 minutes. I don't mind letting you go early because you know it's a it's a fun night with go karts and things. Okay, we got to pass it all the way up. All right, you gotta, you're going to have to stand up for this one. You're not going to make it from, I don't know, you might, though. You're, all right, here we go. Boom. That's nice. Wow, way to, can you, excuse me, sir, can you, are you available for the Mariners anytime, Mariners? It's terrible. That's all right. So I don't want to talk about it. Um, I started using DP Notify. And yes. Basically switching over from, like, the old workflows and yeah. all our scripts and putting it into this. And I even use like the dash monkey and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. So we use Jamf and I was having an issue where I didn't want a long script. Sure. You know, so I have like eight scripts. The first one, like as, as it gets uh, installed um, through enrollment complete and everything, then it just drops an icon on the desktop where the guys are doing it, so we just double click. These are, this is only for our lab machines. Mm -hmm. So we double click it, it runs, we name comp computer name, asset tag, API up to Jamf, everything is good. So our first one does like, it calls every um, Jamf trigger, event mm -hmm. triggers, boom. So then it goes next policy and then we do it like that. And so I was having an issue where number one, as I do that, um, I noticed that I didn't need to relaunch DEP Notify because it was open. Mm -hmm. Because then at the end when I did a quit, it was like, well, you have five of them, so you have to quit it five times. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also found that even at the end, when I did a quit, since I had that pop-up window, that pop-up window actually stood in the back. Yeah, and that, then, was a, that was a defect, actually. Well, I want to say defect. That's the wrong word. It was a bug. Okay. Uh, in a previous version that All they've right, since so maybe fixed. I just need to update. Yeah, yeah. And then, go to so the latest then my version. workaround was, okay, at the end, just say, all right, we're ready to go and reboot. And then after that reboot, that tells me or that tells any of the other techs that it's ready to go. So if it rebooted and now, you, now you're at the login screen with, because it's bound to AD uh, with the username and password, it mm -hmm. can continue. Um, and I just wanted to see what was your thoughts on uh, like running eight scripts versus one. Right. I think it's, I think it's a preference. I mean, I, I don't mind a long script. Um, as long as it has comments, can we get an amen on that somewhere? Um, is, if you have a long script and, you, and it's fine, as long as you have plenty of comments. 
um, because I think as somebody else, my uh, thing I always say is if I write a script, I want somebody to come in behind me and be able to know exactly what I was doing, where, when, and more comments, the better. Um, I, I mean, I think, I'm thinking kind of logically about your question, and I would almost wonder if it would be best to have, if you wanted to do a shortened script, and then make calls to those five scripts in that one script? Is that what you kind of do, or is that, that's, or are you? That's basically it. Okay, I because then you could start depth notify, run those five scripts, and then end depth notify. I don't know if that's an option or not, because it's going to keep running in the background no matter, no matter what. So if you have another script that you want to run that's going to write to that controller log file, it's going to output, depth notify is open. So it's going to output whatever's going on, you know, whatever you're pushing to that log file. So I don't know if that's an option, too. I, I would recommend doing the latest version, then trying your system again and see if that if you're still getting the same setup. Um, and I know they've recently updated the Jamf um, depth notify script as well to, to handle some things. So that starter script, did you try that? Or have you, are you using that? OK. So in, in my, the links section, or just Google it, Jamf starter script depth notify, it's, it's going to be much easier. It's probably doing most of what you already want to do anyway. Yeah. Um, and you just have to kind of connect the dots to the, the different calls that it's making. Um, and then my <laughs> other thing was, I don't know, you showed it really quick um, with like the Nomad. Yeah. Did, as part of your DP notify, <laughs> did it like, did it auto create the account with the AD password? Like, how did that happen? Yeah. Um, uh, no. It, so w what happens there is um, when I log in the first time during Setup Assistant, that's my single sign-on password It's connected to Active Directory to get through Setup Assistant because we do that in Workspace ONE. The next screen is you're creating the local account. If you notice, the local account already has the passwords there. So since the passwords are already there in that local account, all I have to do then is at the top change the username to whatever I want it to be or keep it the same, whatever I want. I think I changed my home folder. And then you click Next. So when that local account is created, it's created with your single sign-on password because that's what you put in the Setup Assistant when it created the first account. So it's assuming that's the password that you want to use. At least logically, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Apple may have a completely different explanation for it, but it makes sense to me that that works that way. So when Depth Notify installs, um, during or when, excuse me, Nomad installs as part of my depth notify process, uh, one of the things that it does, it, it installs last. I think I have it towards the end of my installation. Because what I want to happen is I want to connect to um, my, uh, my corporate wireless. And the thing that Nomad sees is it sees that, hey, look, um, I see that you're connected. I just want to go grab a Kerberos ticket. So it's asking me in that screenshot um, for my username and password for Nomad, uh, for, or my single sign-on username and password. So when I put that in there, it then takes that ticket, puts it in my keychain, and then I don't get prompted anymore. And in fact, I get a nice little pop-up at the top that says, my password expires in 59 days, or my password expires in 32 days. That's why I recommend Nomad for even Active Directory uh, bound Macs. Because what's the biggest complaint we get from users? I didn't know my password was going to change. You didn't tell me. Well. I'm going to put a big flashing triangle at the top of your menu bar and, and make, uh, there's a funny story too that I heard recently, I won't share it here, but where people got, went unhinged when they put that up there at the top of the menu bar because it affected their, their workflow somehow. I'm not sure how, but uh, I want to know when my password expires. So, What other questions do you have? I mean, anybody, have you tried uh, Jamf Connect instead of the Nomad way? I, I have not because we're a Workspace ONE shop and I, I've never, uh, truth be told, used Jamf in an enterprise environment before. Um, with 20 years of experience, you think I had run across that MDM once or twice. But it's all been Mobile Iron, AirWatch, Intune. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't gotten around, simple MDM, I haven't gotten around to Jamf. Uh, but my colleagues tell me that uh, no, Nomad Login or Jamf Connect works really well. So for what that's worth. Okay, what other questions? We've got 17 minutes. Plenty of time. If anyone has, don't be shy. All right, you got to go across the room. Here we go. I got to beat that. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good throw. All right, get ready. All right, here we go. Nice. I'm really impressed with the throws in here today. Uh, this is terrific. I just had a question on Nomad. I saw, did you customize your 
I did. Prompting, is yeah. that, did you get that from the Slack channel or is that documented somewhere? It's documented, yep. Okay. And it's really, uh, it's really neat because I wanted to, it's kind of, it's hard. People see yeah, that pop-up, they're like. By default, I, it just says no med technology. Yeah, it says, yeah, yeah. They, they don't know, what am I supposed to put in here? So I had people putting in all kinds of things. So I did, I did, I did a couple things. Let me see if this is gonna come up because this is kind of neat. In that prompt, are you leveraging the nomad colon login? I think whatever the trigger is that it checks, if it's logged in, it'll prompt you. If yes. It's not logged in, but if you are, it doesn't do anything. If you're on, no, so the check that I'm doing is to check to see if it's, you're on a corporate network. Because I know on the Slack channel I got, it, if Nomad's not connected, there's a script you can run that will prompt, but if they are connected, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so I'm only prompting if I'm connected. So you guys see at the top here, it says AAG offline. Yep. That's the Alaska Air Group offline. So that lets me know right away that I'm not connected to my corporate network. So what I did is I did a, um, I did a page. This is so cheesy but I'll show it. So what is Nomad? I just put this together and what is that, that Microsoft product that allows you to make anything a web page? I don't know, I was pretty excited one night and I did it. Uh, so this talks about what Nomad is, why do we use it at Alaska Airlines, is it safe, how do I update my password because people still don't know how to update their password. Um, so there's a neat little feature within Nomad, you can change your single sign-on password and then um, it says your password has changed. This is the pop-up I was talking about before, by the way. When you're on a different computer and your password's changed, Nomad says, hey, um, your password was changed and needs to be updated. Um, and so you put in your username and password. This is the part I configured here at the top that he's referring to. Nomad, enter your Air Group login. So we're very specific in our organization about what's a single sign-on password and what's a login, what are my user credentials. Um, users still foul it up, but it's okay. As you can tell from my presentation, I want to give them all the things. So I'm trying to make them build their own Macs. So I have all the confidence in the world that end users can, can take care of that. So that's, uh, that's how I handle that. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I'll just okay. look online to find that. Sure, you. sure. Oh, you got to go back now. He's got another question. Oh, boy. I think he just wants to test your <laughs> incoming. <laughs> So that's, that's, that's why that's we didn't cool. buy these right when they first came out. Yeah, yeah. The director was worried of that. Soft. Kids. <laughs> um, the two notifications that you had, like the file vault and stuff. Yes. Is that, were those created as part of your MDM? Yes. All right. Yeah. That's not a depth notify thing. That's an MDM thing. You can certainly do that on depth notify. You can, uh, but I think if I'm re if I remember correctly, they're coming out with the ability to, uh, not enable, you have to enable file vault from the MDM. Am I right in that? Is, is somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Like you can't launch the regular FD setup anymore from a script, doesn't have to come from an MDM or that's the future that they're going to. I believe I read that. I so I just kept it, it's just happening on the MDM. I don't do it in the script. No, I just wondering because so like for example, we use um, something on GitHub for notifications uh -huh. because like jam doesn't do it the way we want and we can't say restart now or close or more info. So I just want to see if you were doing it. Yeah. Similar. What is that, Coco or something? Isn't that the Coco notifications? The Yo, or maybe show, yeah. It's one of those, but we had to do that and then it's like, we have all these smart groups. It's like, you don't have file vault enabled. Here's how, and then it brings you to our wiki oh, pages and I stuff see. like that. I see, so I, that's why that's I a neat idea. Something. Yeah, there's a, a colleague of mine that works at HBO, Adam Martin. Uh, he is crazy about notifications, and that guy posts stuff all the time in Slack about how he, he does these elaborate things at HBO where he has, uh, like he does this full-blown notification. I mean, it's a regular notification, but it's going out, they can click a button, and it emails, and you know, like he just did this whole thing where he went from parallels to fusion, I believe, and so it removed, it did all this back-end stuff, it's terrific. So Adam Martin, look him up. And if you start nagging him and he's like, who are you? Just say Hoppy sent him, sent you, and he'll, uh, He'll be happy about that. All right, what other questions? If people wanna go, it's fine. I don't wanna hold you hostage here. If you have a question, you can see me after. I'm gonna be here till Friday morning sometime. Um, and uh, this is just the surface. There's a lot to this program. So I would recommend that if you wanna learn more, join the Depth Notify uh, Slack channel. And I will, um, and then look over my slides when you get them. And I think you'll get even more information. Thank you very much.